everybody. Glenn here from No Vacancy Podcast and the No Vacancy News Network. So excited that you're here today. So listen, spring is coming, so I thought we'd try something different. All of my purchasing friends right there are thinking about, you know, stocking up their hotels with the latest in outdoor furniture because outdoors has become a quintessential part of the hospitality experience. No longer are we just talking about staying inside, up in your room, or even in those newly activated lobbies. Things have moved outside and you want to give your guests an opportunity to relax out there in comfort and feel special. That's why outdoor furniture is becoming so important. I was in uh, Chicago recently to attend the opening of uh, Cape Soleil's launch line from Almo Hospitality and Agio, and I'm really excited about these products. It's really great. So I had a chance to speak with some of their executives that are putting out this line to learn about the trends that we're seeing in outdoor furniture, how guest experience is improved by outdoor furniture, and why making such an investment in outdoor furniture is the right thing to do. So we got three great interviews for today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey, everybody. Glenn Hausman here of the No Vacancy Podcast Network. I'm here in Chicago today and with the good folks over at Alma who are bringing out a brand new line of outdoor furniture. But the cool thing about it is it really matches with where we're going with customer trends. That's why I have Mr. Greg Corcota, director of FF&E Hospitality with Alma. Greg, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, Glenn. So one of the things that I've noticed over the last couple of years is how important the outdoor suddenly seems to become, which is a little odd to me because outdoor has always been there, you know? It has been there. <laughs> but for some reason, hoteliers didn't recognize how important it is outside, be it um, just a balcony type of situation, or more importantly today, a lot of hoteliers seem to be out there creating outdoor spaces. Why is that? They're creating that outdoor space because it's property that they have, that they've always had, that they weren't right. creating revenue on, mm -hmm. let alone creating a guest experience that would right. expand that horizon within their property. Yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely right. It's, uh, it's amazing to me that suddenly it seems that hoteliers woke up out of nowhere and said, oh my God, we could create this experience that out that's out side and actually make more money. Absolutely. And that revenue generator of having somebody with a cocktail in their hand on a patio, maybe a bistro set out there, just creating that guest comfort, that overall guest experience that they really have inside public areas of the property is now totally expanded outside, keeps them in, harnessed in with maybe a cocktail in their hand, bistro set, comfort zone. So uh, essentially, the idea of an outdoor space is not just to give people a nice place to sit, but it's a way for hoteliers to make more money. Absolutely. Gets their brand out further into the property and see other from the parking lot, maybe from the pool deck, wherever it is, that brand is now expanding. Um, and being that you're the director of ff &E and Hospitality, what is it that hoteliers are looking for when it comes to the outdoor, outdoor experience? Keeping the guest experience, keeping the guests there longer creating more revenue generators. So how do you go ahead and do that? Is there a particular setup that you should be thinking of, or can I just go ahead and throw a couple of chairs outside and call it a day? Keeping the guest experience is probably a little bit more than just a couple of chairs outside, <laughs> well, to be honest with you. I, I prefer you lied, to me, <laughs> honestly. Of course you would. <laughs> but uh, you know, overall, the brands have pl overall game plans right. that they set forth down to the property level. Mm -hmm. And the properties take it upon themselves to now enhance with their staff training. And overall, again, that guest experience that creates scores for the property. So if I'm thinking about a layout, what do you think would be a, a, a perfect scenario for the outdoor experience? I mean, it seems like a fire pit is pretty essential and an area to convene around that. And I feel if you do something like that just to start... That's the beginning of you creating a sense of community and experience, which is really the biggest trends right now in the hospitality business. Absolutely, especially with our enhanced millennial base, the overall community of public area spaces around a property, inside of a property is huge. So yes, you can start with just a small set, depending on what your maybe budget is, and then build it into next year and the following and really enhance that experience overall. And this is becoming something that's even more essential as uh, more extended stay properties come to the market. In fact, nearly one quarter of all hotels currently under development are there for extended stays. So when you're thinking about people staying in the hospitality environment longer, they want to feel more at home. And that 
means more of those outdoor amenities. What about the balcony? I find that a lot of hoteliers don't even think about that. They've got this great outdoor real estate, and I wind up going outside, and I'm either standing there confused or sitting on a little stool. Back in the day, the balcony was for somebody to go outside and sneak a cigarette. Right. Now, it's actually to expand that guest experience again, that space that enhances the overall experience, whether it's down on a a pool deck or up in their own space. It's really enhancing the overall opportunity. What do you recommend for a a balcony? It's basically two chairs and a little table in between or large enough, maybe a, a, a lounge chair? We're seeing everything and all sides in between. Again, a lot of it is budget based. However, if it's most hospitality ba- balconies in say select service are two chairs in a, in a small table. Uh, however, we are seeing more and more trends for four chairs and a table on a balcony. I know that sounds nice because uh, unlike, you know, unlike me, most people have friends. They want to have them come over and be able to uh, entertain uh, in that scenario. So the hotel is becoming a center place for people to get together, for people to create that sense of community and the outdoor experience. If you're missing that, you're really missing out on a lot of potential guest loyalty. Absolutely. And especially with select service, we're seeing more and more trends. I know even from my own personal business travel, Mm -hmm. you see people on those patios until 11, 12 o'clock at nights curled up on a chair or a chaise lounge with their laptops firing off emails. It creates that comfort environment. Like you said uh, earlier, from their comfort of their own home, now they can take that on the road with them. Uh, beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, Greg, thanks so much for bringing uh, your uh, your thoughts here. And in our next chapter of our ongoing story about the importance of uh, outdoor furniture, we're going to be talking about how you can go ahead and start to create a great plan for your outdoor experience. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, Glenn Hausman here from the No Vacancy Network. I'm happy to be working on our continuing series of great outdoor furniture and why it's important for your business to make this investment. I have April Lamberti. She's a director of business development with Alma with me. Uh, April, how are you today? I'm good, Glenn. How are you? Thanks so, for having us. Hey, so good to see you today. And um, it's interesting to me that um, Alma has decided to get into this world of outdoor furniture. It sounds to me you understand what's going on with the trends and want to get in on it. Absolutely. It's a huge area of opportunity for us and certainly for hotels to really expand their indoors into the outdoor spaces mm-hmm. and help guests feel more comfortable. Now, as a distributor, you're not making these things yourselves. You're you're partnering with a company. You found a, a great company out there, uh, Agio, that's been in business for more than uh, 30 years. Tell me a little bit about them. Absolutely. Agio has been a longstanding partner with Almo, actually, and we're delighted that we're able to really venture into this new space space with them. They have so much experience in manufacturing, very high quality levels of product for uh, plenty of time in the U.S. market, and we're looking forward to working with them on this new venture. Excellent. So as somebody that would love to plan a great outdoor space, and I'm, you know, at at my house, we call it the uh, Hausman uh, Resort um, and Pool Club and Smokehouse because, you know, you got to smoke some meats if you're going to be taken seriously, right? Um, So um, I I think about the way that I would want to lay out my outdoor space. And if I'm a hotelier, I probably want to take that to the next level. What would you recommend in terms of creating that great outdoor experience practically with the way it should be set up and the types of products that should be there for people to utilize? That's a great question, Glenn. The interesting thing about the new Cape Soleil line is Mm -hmm. that it really is intended to be an eclectic mix. It is not too matchy-matchy, but everything coordinates so well together. So within the line, there are really seven different, different collections, and those collections can be intermixed and matched throughout a property. So if you're starting with a space that's outdoors, for example, you might first start with dining seating because that might be what the property's specific needs are at this time. But the great thing about it is that later on as the budgets budgets expand or a new budget period comes out, or maybe the property is expanding or renovating and they add on a new space, they don't have to waste that investment that they've made in their capex expenditures they can literally just add on a new collection that coordinates beautifully with what they already have in place and really expand and grow the different seating areas to accommodate that 
new environment. Right. And equally important, uh, uh, what you're saying is with having everything, I like your term, not too matchy matchy, because really that's the style that we see right now. If you think about the indoor space that we have in hotels in the common areas, it's not the same exact line of stuff because you want to create different areas, right? Different environments in it. Perhaps you want to sit outside alone and get some work done. Perhaps you want to sit around and have a glass of wine with friends, or, you know, perhaps there's another reason you want to be out there, such as a, a business meeting. So by having things that are different styles, but I think complement the overall furniture line that you have out there, it sends that signal to the guests that they can have those different types of experiences. Right. And it's a perfect opportunity for a property to really think about the outdoor spaces, not just in as much as how much space do they have and what product can physically fit in that space, but to really think about the outdoor areas as areas for different seating groups. And exactly like you said, they want to think about multifunction or multi-purpose areas where maybe someone is wanting to work on a laptop. They, they are not going to sit at a larger table that has six chairs or 12 chairs around it. They're probably going to sit at something that might be a single table and two chairs as to not invite company to come and join them. Right. They that's want why something I, more quiet. Right. That's why I, I sit in the corner all alone. So, <laughs> so I, I could, I could get my work done, but um, I'm also thinking that depending on your hotel and what the focus is of your hotel, you might want to speak to somebody such as you about some of the opportunities that they could design. I'm thinking very specifically a hotel that's filled on weekends with uh, you know, soccer leagues, for example, might be a very different experience than a hotel that's filled with um, folks from the construction industry, for example, working on a project nearby. Absolutely. The interesting thing about this assortment is that not only do we have a number of different collections, but the hotelier really can decide from the design perspective, what is the right kind of solution for them? Are they looking for something that is more in a, a darker kind of finish or color tone palette? Are they looking for fabrics that are that will match with or coordinate with something that they already have on property? Maybe the interior of a property has certain fabric color tones and they want to carry that and extend that outside. But also the durability of the products that we're using, not just the products in general, all of the frames are powder coated. So they're going to be very durable yet lightweight on the aluminum base as well as cast uh, seating. The other thing is that the fabrics we're using are commercial grade Sunbrella fabrics for the upholstery and then also Pfeiffertex for the sling fabrics. So they have a very high quality reputation that are known for long-term durability. Uh, excellent. And we're going to speak in our next chapter all about the manufacturing process and how these things are put together and why you should focus on spending a little bit more, but you'll get more value out of it. But before we wrap up, April, I feel like every time I go on balconies, people aren't really considering the right type of furniture to have out there. What would you recommend? Actually, the trend is really going to higher seating these days. So don't just think about a simple table and chair that you would sit at at a low, a low seating level, maybe on a patio level. Mm -hmm. But think about a balcony as you want to get your eye level, your eye height over that balcony. Oh, my God. So balcony height seating, totally perfect. My mind is blown. I got to tell you, uh, I've been going to hotels for my entire life, which is a lot longer than I like to admit. And I never, ever occurred to me that you can actually have seating that gets you up over those bars because you're already paying for this great view. You might as well be able to see something. Right? It's a great idea. <laughs> April, how can people find you? You can find us at hospitality.almoproavy.com. Excellent. Beautiful. So stick around because in our next segment, we're going to talk to you all about the quality of the product and why that's so important when you're making an investment for outdoor furniture. Thanks for listening. Hey everybody, Glenn Hausman here from the No Vacancy Podcast, back in the saddle, and this time I'm with Mr. John Oppenheimer, the Executive VP Sales and Marketing with Agio here in the USA. John, great to see you. Thank you. Hopefully uh, this uh, this podcast won't bomb. Sorry, a little uh, nuclear humor there. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, you, you know, Oppenheimer created the atomic it, it, bomb. Yeah, I hear yeah. that a lot. Uh, yeah. So. All right, so it's a cliche for you, new for me. Okay. I'm going to stick with uh, it being historical. All right, all all right. sounds good. So, so John, um, I've got to ask you, when you're talking about the uh, the, the manufacturing process, um, I find that not all products are created equal. I find that sometimes in China, stuff just wasn't done very well, but you've taken a very different approach to the types of products that you're bringing to market around the world 
world and in the United States? Yes, we have. I think it really all begins with design. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what you start with on paper. Right. It's about the materials that you purchase and use in your product. It's the workmanship. It's the packaging. And finally, it's about how you deliver the product to the final end user. So how do you go about um, making sure that your factories are creating products that are not just going to be well received by the customers, but have longevity as well? Well, again, I think in terms of longevity, it's about how much UV that you put into the product, whether it's a woven product, whether it's a powder coat finish. Um, it's about the workmanship. Right. And in the case of commercial products, hospitality, it's a lot heavier product. That The wall right. thicknesses are greater than what we would use on a residential product. So it's built to last for we warned it the phrase for 10 years, but it's really going to last for 20 years uh, well, or longer. Uh, don't, so. don't tell people that. They I'm might not, not buy it often. Not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'm, I'm thinking in particular um, your, your wicker line that I've had the opportunity to uh, walk sure. around and see. Uh, so it's not made with tra traditional wicker. It's made with more of a polyurethane composite yes, type of a product. Absolutely. So it's died as part of the creation of the material itself. And to me, it sounds like that will make it last a little bit longer and at least retain its, uh, its overall look and feel. Well, it's an extruded product, so right. it's color fast all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, it's high in UV content. So you can buy extruded materials that go for maybe 800 hours of UV or 1200 hours or whatever, varying degrees. This is 3000 hours of UV stability built into the product, into the material that we use, goes back to quality begins with the material. Yeah, so. it, it sure does. And um, you folks do everything in your factories, it looks like, from the creating the design right there on the computers to being able to take it right down to the factory floor if you have the materials in-house. Yes, we do, and that's the best way to control the, the quality of the product. We're not relying upon outside resources, hoping that they'll do the job right. Mm -hmm. It's all done in our own factories. And we have four campuses throughout China, um, about 6 million square feet of manufacturing. Ooh, that's absolutely huge. That's, that's pretty big. Pretty uh, big. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's the process like um, building a uh, piece of outdoor furniture, be it either a chair or a table? Well, it starts with a design. Mm -hmm. Once we're happy with the design, then we submit it, if you will, to our R&D department. Right. And we work with them on the measurements and you know what its intended use would be um it would be different for a commercial or hospitality product than it would be for a residential product you'd use a heavier wall aluminum for one channel distribution than you might for another um different powder coats if you will are involved in the process but then we it, at the end of the day we wind up with our first prototype our first sample and we review that for Lots of things, first of all, to see if it met the design criteria. The other is testing. We have to test all of our products. So that has to go through a testing product process right. before we get into production to make sure it'll hold up. I thought it was pretty cool that um, a lot of the furniture is just hand-painted. I never would have expected that. Well, it, go, it, it actually, um, the hand-painting process is a multi-step finish. So the powder coating is not a hand-painting process. Right. But the multi-step finish, whether you want to create a wood look or other kinds of textures and so on, those are all hand applied. And then they have a clear coat over the top to protect that finish. What, so. what types of designs are you finding are getting the most interest these days? I've had the opportunity to learn a little bit about the company, and I, I've seen that you do all of this custom designing, for example, sure. on site. So sure. where are tastes leading to? You know what? It's uh, It's been traditional mm -hmm. in our outdoor industry for many, many years. Uh, there was a time a few years ago you couldn't give away right. a contemporary or modern set of furniture. And I think that's probably the biggest change now. In the last several years, we've seen a lot of growth in what we might call soft modern, uh, maybe not right. in your face contemporary, um, but that's a real area of growth for us. And I think that's a great point because um, uh, hoteliers right now, in particular, if you're looking at the design inside, it's anything but traditional. It Absolutely. has that soft modern approach, which is really created to be able to have a sense of longevity without feeling stale over a short period of time, but still be something a little bit different than we were doing a generation sure. ago. It's just a cleaner look. And I think that's really where the industry is headed. Not that we won't sell 
continue to manufacture and market traditional products. But soft, modern, and a little more contemporary are, uh, in terms of trends, that's a growth area. All right. So it, it sounds to me that if you want traditional, soft, modern, or something really custom, then uh, Agio and your partners at Almo are the place to go. We, we can do it all. You can do it all. We can and do I, it all. I like, I like a guy that can uh, do, it, do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would make another joke here, but I'll just... Uh, okay. Um, so, you know, okay. I, won't, I won't do that. I will wrap up. John, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I want to thank all of you guys for listening and be sure to check out our friends over at Almo for some great advice and opportunities to create an exciting outdoor experience at your property. Thanks for listening. Thank you.